Great. So nice to meet you. And um, I'm so excited to talk about Poker Face, like one of my favorite shows of the year. And um, I love everything about it, including all of Charlie's looks, all the costumes. They're great. Um, so yeah, my first question was, I love the way Charlie looks. And um, I'm also trying to figure out how she looked so effort effortlessly chic on the run. And did that challenge you in picking the right pieces? Or did you recycle a lot of the pieces she wore in the first episode? Um, so you have a lot of energy and so do I. And I'm just like <laughs> staring at you and I'm like, oh my God, this is how I am. So yes, um, <laughs> thanks for all of your questions really fast. Um, uh, for it to be like effortless, what we did is that we did recycle a bunch of pieces, right? And then I'm a big person of like trying to um, uh, have some authenticity in everything I do, right? And so I had to have a backstory for Charlie, which was essentially like she would pick things up from like thrift stores or maybe she like picked up the hat at like the gas station or sunglasses from the gas station. Like, you know, just trying to keep it as real as possible. Also, she just had a bunch of t-shirts like in her car. If you watch the first episode, you kind of know that she's not the most put together person. So it's just yeah. stuff everywhere. Um, and so, yeah, what I basically did was, um, we recycled a bunch of things and she, I mean, she wore her black jeans and her denim jeans, like, you know, almost throughout the entire season. So in the same boots and like, we tried to keep some consistency and the way we kept it so chic is, well, first of all, Natasha can wear clothes, yeah. no other. So that is, um, I think an important element, but also it's just like, she really embodied Charlie. And so just having that like cool vibe and like whatever she was wearing just kind of came through. So there you go. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was thinking about rewatching the episodes. I love her cocktail waitress costume in the pilot. That little hat, so adorable. And it's such the opposite of her, kind of like the dress in the finale. Do you think there's an evolution with her clothes that mirror the journey she's on in some way? Like maybe those dresses are bookending the story? Um, well, first of all, there it is right there. That's the illustration of, <laughs> yeah, you can see that. um, so yeah, I think like, um, she kind of embodies wherever she is. Like she kind of takes on a little bit of that feeling. Like when we were in Texas, we kind of had a little bit of that with like the t-shirt and the Western belts. Um, and then, you know, I just think like, as she's kind of going along, you kind of see like she, like she was in that uh, jumpsuit when she was at the um, old folks home and like, you know, and then she had the sweater and like the old folks glasses, like the, the glasses chain. Like, I do think she kind of, um, you know, she takes on wherever she is. And so as far as the book ending, of course, it's like the first episode you see her in that cocktail dress and it's so cute and it's totally like not who she is, but she's like working it because she knows that that's how she gets her tips. And then towards the end, you know, she's in that great Dolce dress. And that's also, I think, a symbolism of like, you know, that's a present that someone gave her and she has to take that on and just be a part of that world and that moment. So, yeah. Yeah, oh, that's so cool. Um, I read that you were going for a Stevie Nicks vibe for Charlie. But her style is also kind of similar to her best friend, Natalie, you know, who is murdered in the first episode. Was that something that's deliberate? They both like wear those aviators and trucker hats. And like even there's this pained look on on Charlie's face when the aviators come out of the locker, like when they're taking. And I thought, oh, is, is in some way the way she dresses also an homage to her best friend? Um, well... So I would say like Charlie style, where it started from was we wanted to do like Western meets desert meets seventies, right? Which essentially is kind of Stevie Nicks, right? Yes. And then once I got with Marcel and Amy, uh, Marcel is her hairstylist and Amy is um, her makeup artist. Once we all got together and we kind of like talked about the vibe, um, Stevie Nicks was a reoccurring sort of like conversation. So that's where that started. And then as far as like Natalie, she's also in the desert, right? She's got her trucker hat, keep the sun off. Um, she's got her big glasses. Uh, a, she's in weather and so also very bright, but you know, she needed to cover the fact that she had a black eye. Um, and what I think you see um, Charlie reacting to, especially in that moment, is uh, the symbolism of their friendship. You know, she really loved this person and now that person's gone. And I think it's kind of cool that you equated it to the glasses because that's kind of like where you see it the most. Um, but I think that, yeah, it has to do with the fact that, yes, they do sort of have a similar aesthetic, but also just like, you know, they're besties. And so I think that those glasses just really hit a point with her being like, oh, you know, my friend is gone. So yes. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. 
uh, you got to dress a lot of guest stars. Uh, <laughs> and they're only people we see for like one episode I felt like does that put pressure on you to get the right costume like no pressure at no pressure all. At all. no <laughs> I mean I breezed right through that no to be completely <laughs> honest with you yeah we're getting like Oscar Oscar winners and like you know we're in the we shot literally in the middle of nowhere so the closest thing was an outlet mall um so yeah no pressure uh, <laughs> You know, we, um, if there was even an inkling of somebody we might, might, might be cast, I would um, call around all my friends in the costume world and I'd be like, hey, so do you know this person's sizes by chance? And I would just kind of like do a little pre-shop just to make sure that I would have some things. And I really feel like, uh, you know, I got very, uh, very lucky, but also I was very strategic in the fact that like, I would try to make sure that I would have stuff that I thought would work if that person just might be cast. Just an inkling, even if I just got a little like rumor, you know? So I think wow. that really, really helped set us up because we got people, you know, maybe a couple days before they worked. So it was very hard to um, to acquire those things very, very fast, but I think, I think we did a great job, you know? Oh, you uh, did. Brody, I mean, that was, uh, he ended up being like in an ASOS jacket that I just kind of styled like a vintage flare. He also had like um, John Barbados. We put him in like some Levi's, like, but it's, it really comes down to the way I think that, you know, I put it together. It's like, he had those special little brooches, yeah. tied it all in. Um, and uh, his inspiration was Casino, you know? It was like, yeah, totally. That like pop of like color and like coolness. So um yeah that was cool and then obviously like somebody like Ellen Barkin with the diva and say oh. you know um that orange dress that she wears on uh, on stage in that episode I happened to be I came to LA for a um, wedding and I was like you know what I'm just gonna pop in sacks before I go get on the plane like and I found that dress there like it wow. was just I do feel like the costume goddesses like look down on me because I really happen to be like in the right place at the right time finding the right thing. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. I also love Cherry Jones's costume oh, and look yeah. like did you just like look through the racks of evil because that just like her, like right? goes through so well like. Um, so with Cherry Jones is so important that character Laura she needed to feel extremely rich chic and sinister right yes. mm -hmm. so and cherry who was like the sweetest person on the planet by the way does not dress like this in real life yeah <laughs> whole conversation about the fact that like she's like i don't really wear suits and you know and i was like okay well i got you don't worry so um i she's wearing carolina herrera uh for two of those looks um the black and white dress which she dies in um and then also the white and black um it looks like a skirt and top, but it's actually a dress and we belted it. So it kind of looks like two pieces, but um, yeah. And then the suits, I have to tell you, like, I was like, I'm going to find, I'm, I'm going to find the right thing. And the first thing that came to mind for me, for her was Max Mara, believe it or not, just because of like the way it's cut. And um, I spent a day in Neiman Markets and Zach's and a couple of other places. And um, I found... I feel like all the right pieces, especially like those tied, you know, those uh, pussy willow. Uh, yeah. Just so cool. And the colors just needed to be the right, like creams and the right, like grays. Um, and then I mixed it in with some Amazon brooches and one of my vintage brooches and it all kind of came together. Wow. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> right? It's like you never know. And that's the thing I love about costume design. It's just like, you know, it could be a piece you've had for a hundred years, like a bunch of Natasha's um uh Charlie's pajamas in the first episode. I've had those things for 25 years. Like her robe, the brown robe. Yeah. 25 years. She's wearing that's a Christian Dior vintage robe. Oh my god. I know. And then the striped PJ, same thing, Christian Dior. Literally have had those for 25 years. Like but again, I pulled them out and I was like, this is, Natasha's like, oh my God, I love these. So it was just like, they're the right thing. And I feel like that's why I love it so much. It could be something from like downtown or it could be something from Saks or anywhere in between, vintage store, Amazon, who knows? That's amazing. 
Um, I also want to ask you about Joseph Gordon-Levitt's tech bro sweatsuit is what I call it. Uh, it almost makes him look like a mobster and I, you get like a bad vibe almost immediately. And I was wondering what kind of discussion did you have about what you would have him wear? I have to tell you from day one, I was like, Ryan, this is what I want to do. I was like, it needs to be like these chic colors again with the cream and the taupe and the gray and he was like okay and I was like and I really really want it to be um a certain designer and he was like okay and so I was like all right um Bruno Cuntellini right like that is who it needs to be and that is the cream jumpsuit that he ends up in is all it's all Bruno and uh Brunello and so it's um I think that's kind of like where it started. And then just the way he wears it feels sort of sinister, sort of just like kind of badassy. And it's like a relaxed sort of like feeling with him. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's literally where that that came from and it came to fruition. And I will say that his shoes, which I always forget the name of, but I can tell you right now because I have it in my notes. Um, uh, those came from Denmark, and the reason wow. they were so important is because they're such a big part of the story. Yeah. Uh, because the uh shoe imprint is how he um he ends up being incriminated. Yeah, so, totally. Uh, the That's shoes what are Morty made. Morty takes the picture of. Exactly. Yeah. So, and I love when like the costume design becomes such a part of like the clues. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, or like an Easter egg of some sort. So the viewer kind of understands like what's happening. So those shoes are made by um, Aurelian. It's A-U-R-E-L-I-A-N. And my assistant, Rochelle Carino, she was the one that found those. And uh, literally they arrived uh, the morning of the shoot. Wow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no big deal. No big deal. <laughs> Nobody knows that, right? Like nobody, knows. Ryan doesn't even know that. It's like, <laughs> he's like, do you have those shoes? And I was like, yeah, I have those shoes. And they were literally driving up the set as he was asking the question. Like, thank you, costume artist. <laughs> no sweat. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Um, one final question. So what is your favorite look that you worked on this for this first season? <laughs> Oh, I hate this question. You know why? Because there's so many good ones. Um, okay, so I'm gonna narrow it down to two because I have to. The first one is obviously the um the uh the sweater, right? With the boots, uh when she is uh um sitting outside of her trailer. I love that look too. Yeah, it's just like it's so cool, yet so just kind of like uh um I'm just some girl just being like totally relaxed and I'm not even trying like you said it's just so effortless and it looks so good on her um so that's one of my favorites and I have to say I think like out of the entire episode um I'm sorry the entire season I love she looks so good in those vests okay does, I'm, yeah. gonna say, I'm gonna say it's um she has these, uh, Charlie has these great, like, uh, light denim shorts uh, that she wears in episode eight. And she has this Rick Rack, uh, like, 90s vest. And she's wearing it with, like, a light blue Budweiser t-shirt and her and her boots. And it just, it's so many different things. And, but it just came together, like, so well. And it's, like, you know, it's, it, it it's, like, vintage, but mixed with, like, contemporary, but sort of desert sort of like all the things that her character is and it's so cool looking without like trying so I, I think that that that's just probably I love that answer because it's like not what you'd expect and I love it yeah I mean, everyone's like the Dolce dress yeah she's right. amazing in the Dolce yeah. dress. like she has the cutest legs and like that dress just pops and it's it's so great but you know to me I wanted to feel I'm all like I said I'm all about like the authenticity and that that short outfit with the vest that, by the way, that's Natasha's favorite vest out of the whole season. Um, it just feels so like the character. And it's fun to watch. So, yeah, that's my favorite. I love that. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your all the amazing looks. And, uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Yeah, pleasure speaking with you, too. Have a good one. <laughs> Bye. Bye.